All right, welcome back, boys. Welcome back. We're in for the next instalment of the adventure. Uh, with those of you with good long-term memory might recall where um, we were right on the cusp of constructing the fancy jewellery box, unlocking all of these really useful teleports, bristling with anticipation. And we got cock-blocked by the requirement for the skills, necklaces, and combat bracelets to be enchanted before using them to build the box. Now, be fair, it was careless not to have checked um, ahead of time, but you don't need the Amulet of Glory to be charged to use it for construction, and that was already on the wall. So, you know, I somehow figured Jagex had just worked out that nobody likes quest requirements as part of construction training and was slowly phasing that out. Clearly that's not the case. Um, so here we are. I had to uh, stow my excitement back in the bag um, and plan my next move. Now, although the timing is kind of frustrating, it's not such a bad thing to be pushed into doing Legends Quest a bit ahead of schedule. Uh, there are quite a few good unlocks from doing it. Uh, the Legends Cape is probably best in slot for melee until I can be fucked doing a fire cape. Uh, you're able to access a shop to buy half of the Dragon Square Shields, uh, which you need to complete the Hard Arty Diary. The Hard? Uh, the quest itself is a prerequisite for quite a few other quests that I'd like to do eventually, including Dragon Slayer 2, Recipe for Disaster. Um, and eventually, like a long-term goal, I'd like to complete a quest cape and finish the Lumbi Elite Diary. So I can stop carrying around this stupid Draymond stuff everywhere. The level requirements for Legends Quest were fine. We had pretty much everything. I think a little bit of power mining iron to hit that level 52. Now the, the issue was the prerequisite quest since we were missing quite a few of those. Um, including Heroes Quest which has other prerequisites to complete that one. So that's what we're doing now. First up, Underground Pass. Alright, now Underground Pass involves going through an Underground Pass. Uh, luckily, I had completed uh, Plague City and Biohazard early on in the account, so I could jump right in. Uh, now, Underground Pass is quite infamous for being frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of backing and forthing. Once you're in the tunnel, there isn't really any way out. There's a lot of obstacles going through the pass which you can fail just by chance, uh, taking damage and forcing you to repeat a section. Luckily, chances for failing a lot of these obstacles scale off your agility level. And at this point in the account, my agility is pretty high, uh, meaning I didn't fail all that often and the quest wasn't as frustrating as it might have otherwise been. All right, now plot-wise, uh, you're basically being told by King Lathus that they need to use the underground path as a route to access the lands to the west. Um, and apart from all of his foot soldiers bitching about the agility obstacles and that going through the underground pass is, quote, complete AIDS, uh, there's another reason they can't get through. Because the demon lord Iben and his follower employees, also known as Iben's staff, um, have taken off residence in the tunnel, um, effectively blocking the passage. You need to traverse the tunnel, uh, solving traps and puzzles along the way, and then upon reaching the depths, confront Iben and seal him back from whence he came. Along the way, you need to start an oil fire, crush a unicorn, fight a giant spider, and betray some friendly paladins. Once you reach the heart of the cavern, uh, you walk along these balance beams occupied by Iben's staff uh, to collect the different bits and pieces you need to take down Iben. Iben's staff has bound Iben to this little voodoo doll thing, as demonic spirits often seem to be. We need to smear the doll with uh, ash and blood 
and then drop it down this silvery looking well effectively banishing Ivan and clearing passage through the underground paths as a reward for completing the quest and banishing Ivan and Ivan's staff the player receives Ivan's staff as well as five quest points and a little bit of attack and agility XP. Now, the next quest isn't actually a requirement for Legends Quest, so we're deviating a little off theme, but uh, the next quest in the Elf quest line after completing Underground Pass is Regicide. Um, and completing Regicide takes us one step closer to Song of the Elves, which is also a goal on this account, as well as opening up parts of Taranwen, Issafar, uh, access to Zulra. Um, and since it's definitely going to be something I want to do at some point, and I'm already in the area after doing Underground Pass, I decided to smash that one out too. Now, Regicide requires you to kill another king. Lathus's dastardly evil brother, King Tyrus. Um, so after going back through the Underground Pass yet again, uh, this time we're going beyond the well where we drowned Ivan's doll and emerging from the other side. The Chirrwind Border Control tries to stop and ask a few questions, but they're cut down in their tracks by the soldiers of Lord Ireworth, who are our elvish allies on this side of the path. Now, being a chivalrous warrior, uh, we challenged the king to a battle of honor. And we did so by catapulting an improvised explosive device into his camp uh, from behind the safety of the tree lines. Um, unfortunately, the remote airstrike caused a few civilian casualties um, alongside the intended targets. It's regrettable, but this is the nature of modern warfare. Overall, I think if you added up the numbers, you'd find that there were far fewer casualties than in an all-out war. Now, on the way back to report the carnage and destruction of the evil King Tyrus, back to King Lathus in Ardoy, we're accosted by a member of the enemy elf fraction uh, to deliver an almighty plot twist. It turns out, uh, it's, it's really hard to believe this one, but it turns out that the king who has segregated half of his own population, trapping them behind a wall in abject poverty under the false pretense of a plague, the king who gave us a mission requiring us to skull crush a unicorn, cut down paladins, and then carry out a terrorist airstrike on his own brother using an IED. It turns out he's the bad guy. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to believe, but... Um, then again, a member of the opposing army teleported behind us and handed us a piece of paper, so it must be true. Um, anyway, for the time being, we're told not to call the king out on his BS. Uh, we accept the reward, and that's another quest complete, um, and one step closer to Song of the Elves. Now, a really big thing about this quest is access to Zura, um, and specifically the Zura death storage. I'm not actually ready to start camping the snake uh, on this account yet uh, but even being able to access the boss is huge as you may or may not know as an ultimate iron man i cannot use the bank um, so any mechanic that can be used to store away items and free up inventory space can be a real game changer and because the Zura boss fight is instance, and presumably it was decided that having players lose all their gear on death without even having a chance to pick it up would be too harsh. Uh, the friendly priestess over there collects and holds everything you're carrying if you die attempting to get your cowquat seeds and pure essence and flax. And yeah, unlike the item piles formed by deliberately dying to the nettles, uh, which despawn if you don't pick it up in an hour, uh, she'll hold all your gear indefinitely until you get it back. Uh, the caveat, of course, is if you die again anywhere before retrieving it, then it's wiped forever. Uh, so you can only really do this for activities where there's basically zero chance of death. Um, even so, highly useful to unlock. And the next quest requirement for Legends was Shiloh Village. 
Uh, not a whole lot to say about this one. Uh, there are zombies blocking the entrance to Shiloh Village. Ideally, you'd like there to be fewer zombies. The cause of these zombies is the vengeful spirit of Queen Rashilla. Um, but luckily we appease her wrath by wandering through a cave to interfere with her corpse and placing her corpse down again in a better, nicer cave. We then did Dragon Slayer, which is the pinnacle achievement for um, any free-to-play player. But um, after slaying hundreds of red dragons during my AFK prayer training arc, uh, Elvarg wasn't too intimidating. Uh, the only hard part is getting there. Now we have to buy a boat, patch the boat, recruit a captain, climb a tower, solve a rizzle, blast a greedy little goblin fucker who asks for too much money, put a map together, and then finally set sail. And then, after all that, the Elvarg fight itself is anticlimactic and over in seconds. Uh, there are a few clue steps over on Crandor Island though, so it's also nice to have access for that and to be able to get there. Uh, Waterfall quest was also fairly quick and easy. Uh, it's another one of those quests people usually knock out right at the start of the account to get some fatty attack XP early in the game. Um, I neglected to do so, uh, so we're smashing it out now. Um, the only setback with Waterfall Quest as a UIM is a bit like Enlightened Journey um, on Entrana. Uh, there's a section where you can't take any weapons or items into the cave. Um, and as you may or may not know, as an ultimate Iron Man, I cannot use the bank. And this means any sections requiring me to deposit items uh, requires me to deliberately die, so I am no longer holding the items until I pick them up again. Uh, the actual plot for Waterfall Quest is that a boy confides in you that he's heard a rumour of treasure behind a nearby waterfall. Um, and naturally, as you're a big strong adult and he's just a stupid little kid, um, as soon as he tells you about this, you decide to take the treasure for yourself. You abseil down using a single point anchor tethered to a brittle old branch and discover a secret door behind the waterfall. However, uh, much like attempting to pick up women at the bar, uh, the cave will reject your advances unless you're wearing an ancient gnomish amulet and have a pocket full of cremated ash. Now, nothing has ever stood in our way of finding treasure, least of all defiling an ancient tomb. Uh, so we head on over through the gnome hedge maze, pick up Glariel's pebble, and use it to enter the nearby crypt. Uh, you take Glariel's ashes, I mean, she's not going to be needing them. Um, you take her amulet and head back to the waterfall gate. Head inside, ignoring the noobs grinding for their first rune scimitar. And you go to the last room to place the ashes, amulet, and elemental runes on each of the pillars. And for this, we're rewarded with untold riches beyond our wildest imagination in the form of two gold bars and some flower seeds. All right, now the final prerequisite before Hero's Quest um, and then Legend's Quest has some of the highest requirements of anything in the game, despite being free-to-play content and something you can access fairly on, on the account. And this is because you need a human friend to complete it with. Uh, Shield of Arag is designed to be played in co-op mode, uh, Meaning that you need a buddy in the opposing gang fraction to get the other half of the shield. Uh, luckily, if you're a friendless loser, there are dedicated community chats. Um, which you can use to find a partner. Even this was going to be too much human interaction. So I did the only thing that a sane, rational person would do. And that is create another account from scratch and play it through the game to a point where I could multi-log and complete both parts of the quest myself. You also need to rely on a partner again um, and have members with both gang fractions for Heroes Quest. But unlike Shield of Arab, which is a one and done kind of deal, meaning once you finish the quest, uh, you can't get back and take another shield half. Players who have already completed Heroes um, can still help others, even after completion. 
So I only had to grind up the alt account a few levels to fight a couple of low level NPCs that you need in Shield of Arrow. And not all the way up to complete Heroes Quest. Which is good because you know I would have fucking done it if that's what it had come to. Anyway, the only thing is I had to make sure to pick the Phoenix Gang on the UIM because the main um, that I'll use for Heroes is already in the Black Arm Gang. To join the Phoenix Gang, you need to do a drive-by and bust a cap in the ass of Johnny the Beard. After proving that you're ice cold and a true OG, you're sworn into the gang and provided with a key to the weapons room. I handed this key to my partner, who as you may recall, was also just me in disguise. Um, and I was able to enter the weapons hideout on my alt account, get two of the Phoenix Gang's exclusively patented crossbows, take this over to the Black Arm Gang, pretend I stole them and prove my allegiance. Then with gang members in both gangs, we were now able to recover both shield halves from their respective secret hideouts in the bases and turn these into the museum to complete the quest.